We are back from DragonCon, and I received a really cool gift at DragonCon from my friend Michael Bailey. You might remember him from the Dreamland episode talking about Batman uh, with uh, Melinda and Aaron. And if you haven't uh, heard that, go check it out. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, they get with Michael Bailey, who's a big comic book expert, runs his own podcast about comic books to talk about the origins of Batman. But anyway, Michael and I are good friends, and we decided to do a figure swap. Uh, I've been collecting the Captain America figures from the Marvel Legends series because Chris Evans' depiction of Captain America is my favorite character in the MCU. And uh, he is a big comic book guy, and he decided he was going to start focusing on just the comic book accurate versions of the characters. So I had a Toy Biz Legends uh, six-inch Captain America, and he had one of the Captain Americas that I uh, did not have from the movies yet. He had the Age of Ultron version, and I needed that, so we did a figure swap. I brought it back, and I took a photo, and I put it up on the Retro Blasting Instagram. And when I did, somebody said, oh my gosh, when are you going to uh, you know, do a video about these figures? And I thought, that's a good point. I'll do it right now, now that I'm done with Dragon Con and all that stuff. So uh, this is going to be kind of informal, because my take on modern figures is rather different from collecting vintage. Uh, to me, most everything after 1993 is pretty fair game, and uh, I collect that stuff for my own aesthetic enjoyment, uh, not necessarily uh, for any kind of chronicle or preservation in, in that sense. I'm, I'm more uh, open to you know part swaps and things like that to get ideal versions of things together um, in the in the modern space, um, especially when you're paying you know 20 bucks a figure uh, and Hasbro has, you know, done certain things in the past and they haven't brought those figures back, but they've improved head sculpts, but you only get those heads on certain other figures. It's, it's a whole thing. So uh, instead of actually reviewing these sort of traditionally, what I thought I'd do is kind of walk you through what I did to assemble uh, my ultimate Captain America uh, MCU figure collection. Um, so I thought we'd just get started with the very first one, uh, Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, this figure is not officially Marvel Legends. This figure was a six-inch figure that was exclusive to Walmart. Uh, and it was, I guess it was one of the first ones they brought out. And it's unfortunate that Hasbro has never revisited this figure because it's the only depiction in the six-inch scale of his original uniform which is the one I really like the most. Now, as you might see, this figure has some problems. First of all, compared to the other figures in the line, this one is very short. I mean, he looks like Gimli compared to the rest of them. And again, this is one of those deals with Hasbro's Marvel Legends line. The figures keep getting taller the longer the line goes on. And you'll see an example of this toward the end of this video. Also, his head is too small. Uh, for some reason, the helmeted head sculpt that they used was too small compared to the body that they had sculpted. And this continues to be a problem for the next few figures as well. The other issue with this figure was the shield. This was the first attempt at a six inch shield and Hasbro did not use quality plastics. And so the shield comes out of the package warped and messed up and the color's very matte. It doesn't look very metallic. It's just a mess. And so I knew that I was gonna need a different shield as well if I was going to salvage this action figure. So the first thing that I had on hand to salvage the shield, which was the easiest fix, was the shield from the three pack from Civil War that uh, contained the sort of battle damaged Captain America and Iron Man and Spider-Man, uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And it comes with a, a sort of battle worn shield. Now in the promotional materials for the first Avenger, the shield is often depicted as nicked up and scuffed and has burn marks on it. I thought this would be a good replacement for this Captain America figure. So I gave him that shield from that set. The next hurdle, of course, was his head. And for quite a while, I thought I was just going to have to live with that head. But then very recently, Hasbro released the Peggy Carter and Steve Rogers two-pack. It's an Amazon exclusive, and it came with Captain America in his rescue uniform from World War II with the helmet, the goggles, the leather jacket, and it came with two heads. One head that was more helmet friendly, and then another head that looked like his hairstyle from the first Avenger. Now, serendipitously, 
uh, this head had the same size ball joint socket as the original first Avenger figure. I don't know if that was just good luck or if Hasbro did that deliberately because all of the subsequent Steve Rogers figures, the Captain Americas in the, in the Marvel Legends line, they have smaller ball joints on their necks. So the, the heads aren't always compatible. But in this case, uh, I was able to take the latest Steve Rogers head and put it on the earliest Steve Rogers figure. And when you do that, you actually get a character that mimics the movie poster, which is really nice. It's like, yeah, I would prefer to have a helmeted version of Steve Rogers uh, in this outfit, but if I can't get that, then at least I have something that looks kind of like the, the original movie poster. So I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, again, he is too short, but there's not a lot I can do about that. The head does help a little bit with that because at least it's more in proportion to the body. Now, at this point, you're probably asking yourself, where is the Avengers version of Captain America? Now, they did do a Walmart exclusive six inch version of Captain America during the Avengers uh, movie tie in. Uh, I do not have that figure because uh, I just haven't gotten around to collecting it. However, I think I'm going to skip it because they've just announced that they're going to be doing a new Avengers style Captain America. Officially, he's modeled after Endgame from the time travel sequence, but that's Avengers 1 Captain America. He has a better Chris Evans head sculpt. He's probably going to be more in line with the heights of the figures as they are now, and he's definitely going to have, you know, a better helmeted head look. So I'm going to wait and get that one when it comes out sometime in October. All right, let's move on to The Winter Soldier, my favorite MCU movie of all time and certainly the best Captain America movie in the whole series. Uh, I definitely wanted to get this figure in my collection and by this time Hasbro had started branding them as Marvel Legends. Now the Winter Soldier figure is depicted in his stealth suit from the very beginning of the film when he beats up all those guys on the ship. But that uniform is also used throughout most of the first half of the movie and it's in the iconic elevator fight sequence which is my favorite scene in the whole film. Yeah, I know, sounds cliche, but it's good for a reason. People love it for a reason. It's just that great a moment. The Winter Soldier figure, though, is very difficult to find now uh, for a decent price. And it's also a little dated in the head sculpt. However, if you can get the figure, which I did, and you plan to, uh, you know, jettison some of the more offensive parts, uh, you can actually come out with a really nice looking figure. The helmeted head is, as I said, it's one of those smaller heads. It's, it's a little too small for the body. The body has been improved from the first Avenger figure. The body is now broader shouldered, uh, you know, a little trimmer in the waist, taller. It just looks better overall. And then you have the head sculpt. And the head sculpt, unfortunately, looks terrible. This is the first time that we got two heads. Uh, a non-helmeted head and a helmeted head. The helmeted head still has the problems. The face on it looks very generic. The unhelmeted head looks like a character from Small Soldiers or Duke from G.I. Joe from a cartoon. It doesn't really look like a human being. It looks like a, a stylized caricature of a tough guy. Uh, so that needed to be changed. Also, the shield that came with the figure is the stealth shield, and that is not something I wanted, so I was gonna have to find another shield as well. So the first thing I did was I did a head swap on the figure. Uh, fortunately, the neck joint is the same size as the current Civil War Captain America figures that have come out, and there's a great two-pack that came out with uh, Captain America and Crossbones that comes with a helmeted head for Cap and a non-helmeted head that really looks like Chris Evans from the modern films. In other words, the non-1940s era, the modern era. And uh, I thought this will be perfect. And so I put that head on the Winter Soldier body and then I gave him the shield from that set as well to replace the stealth shield. I mean, you could call this elevator action Captain America. Uh, he looks great. He looks like he does on the poster as well. Uh, which is kind of what you have to lean on when you don't have a helmeted uh, version because they love to put, you know, Chris Evans on the posters without the helmets most of the time, uh, up until Civil War, I think. So this was a great result. I was really happy with this, really happy to have this uh, on display in my grouping. Uh, we also have to address 
uh, Black Widow because uh, Black Widow did have a Winter Soldier branded Marvel Legends figure. It was on an old style body, which means they hadn't quite mastered the proportions of these figures to make them both look and pose correctly. Um, she looked very spindly uh, at the time, which isn't, isn't quite right. And her face sculpt, while good for the time, really pales in comparison to the Scarlett Johansson face sculpt that came out for Infinity War. Now, some people say it's the same sculpt, but with a better paint job. Either way, I wanted that paint job on the face. But the Infinity War, Scarlett Johansson has that short blonde hair. So we had to do a hair swap. So I swapped the hair and then was like, what am I gonna do about the body? Well, the Infinity War Scarlett Johansson wins again because you can take that vest off and underneath the vest is a very accurate, close enough Black Widow uh, uniform, the black jumpsuit. The one last thing I did with this was I swapped the hands with the Winter Soldier Black Widow to get those fingerless gloves that she has in Winter Soldier. What you lose when you do that, you do lose the shoulder insignia for S.H.I.E.L.D., which is on the original figure, but the, the overall look is so much better. Uh, and then I just went and found some pistols for her from some of the other S.H.I.E.L.D. multi-packs uh, from Marvel Legends that have come out. I, I went on eBay to find those and put them with her because oddly enough, she comes with guns permanently in her holsters, which is really annoying for the Winter Soldier figure. Uh, so I went and found her some loose accessories uh, for the Infinity War body, uh, which is cool. So that's how I sort of fixed that one up. That one took a little more work than just a simple swap. You know, that took pulling the hair off and then cleaning up the glue and then putting the hair on the other head and doing the whole thing. But the result was worth it. Looks really good. I'm happy with it. And now we come to the Age of Ultron figure. And this figure is troublesome. He has that helmeted head that's slightly too small. He has that unhelmeted head that looks like, you know, some lantern-jawed freak. And his uniform is way, way blue, like a much brighter blue than the movie. So you can't take a helmeted head from a Civil War Captain America and swap it out. Uh, that, that would require more paint work, which I wasn't wanting to do you'd either have to paint the body or you'd have to repaint the head. I wasn't thrilled with either prospect. So I decided that I would do another head swap and I went and got uh, a second two pack with Crossbones and Captain America and got that head out of there and put it on the Age of Ultron Steve Rogers. Now that might not appeal to you because it's not a helmeted head, but in this case, in the Age of Ultron movie, Captain America doesn't wear his helmet in the entire final battle. So it's not the worst solution. Um, it, I would prefer more helmeted heads in my Captain America display, but you know, you take what you can get to improve the look of the figure overall. Now his shield, thankfully, is really great. And so I decided to leave the shield well enough alone. I did not change the shield that came with it. Uh, I was pretty happy with that. So this is a great result for the Age of Ultron Captain America. Let's talk about Winter Soldier and Falcon, especially since they're about to have their own TV show. Falcon and Winter Soldier are options where you don't have a lot of options. Uh, you can get them both as they looked in Civil War, and that's really about it. I think there's another version of the Winter Soldier with his mask on, but I didn't want the bad guy Winter Soldier. I wanted Bucky when he was helping Cap during Civil War, and these two figures are really what you get. I would have preferred a Falcon from Winter Soldier, but they haven't offered that. So I'm just gonna leave that well enough alone and just be happy with what I've got. I made no modifications to these two figures. Civil War Captain America was one that they actually released single carded when the movie came out. And he still had that generic looking sort of face, which I believe they used in the three pack that I told you about as well with Cap, Iron Man, and Spider-Man. Uh, but They've improved a lot on the face sculpts since then with the paint apps and everything. And I didn't want that in my collection. Thankfully, the Captain America that comes with the two pack with crossbones that I've mentioned a hundred times is perfect right out of the box. You don't have to do anything to it if you want him with his helmeted head on and, and that shield. It's perfect. So I just pulled that one right out of the box and put it right on the shelf. I mean, I was, and I was grateful. I really was. I didn't have to do one thing to it. Didn't have to source one part. Looks great. I'm happy. 
Now you're going to start seeing some gaps in my figure collection, and this is purely down to taste and preference. First of all, I do not have the Infinity War Captain America. I do not like the look of it. I do not want it on display. I do not want a Captain America in a dull, dirty uniform with no shield and a full beard. I just don't want it. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't have any wish for that. It has no appeal for me. And Additionally, I have no wish to have the Avengers Endgame time travel suit Captain America figure because the paint apps on it were very dull, the head on it was very generic, and his head was helmeted, which isn't even accurate to the movie. I don't think he wears his helmet once when he's wearing that time travel outfit. Now, I could be wrong. I've only seen the movie once, and my memory may be fuzzy. Either way, even if that was proven wrong and he actually did have his helmet on for some point, uh, you know, wearing that suit. I still don't want it. It's just ugly. If there is one figure from Endgame that I did want, though, it was Captain America from the final battle with Thanos. Uh, they call it the, you know, worthy Captain America because he's wielding Mjolnir, or however you pronounce Thor's uh, hammer. This was a Walmart exclusive, and I found it on the first try, which was really exciting. Uh, he looks great. He comes with a, a battle damage shield, and he comes with the um, Mjolnir hammer, of course. He does come with a helmetless head, but I don't think it actually looks as good as the one from the Civil War 2-pack with crossbones, so I've left it well enough alone because I was going to keep him in the helmet anyway. Uh, but I did pick this up. Really do like this figure. Really glad this one's in my collection. And finally, we come to the last figure, which is the most recent release, but it's really the first Captain America we've ever seen, and that is the rescue uh, uniform Captain America from the first Avenger. We finally got Peggy Carter in a two-pack with him in the leather jacket and the helmet, which on its face seems really great. You know, Peggy Carter looks good, and you think, oh, this is one of the final uniform variants they've never made. This is going to be awesome. Until you realize he is freakishly tall. Freakishly tall compared to the other Captain Americas. He's almost as tall as Thor. He's almost as tall as the Iron Man figures. It makes no sense. And I have to believe it's because they wanted... Peggy to look a certain height next to this particular Captain America, then why didn't you just rescale Peggy because it throws everything off in the whole Marvel Legends line? You literally have to keep these two, you know, separated from the other characters if you want them to look at all normal. It's kind of a letdown. I do wish that they had uh, done something different with this, uh, you know, tried harder to, to bring the, the scale of this Steve Rogers in line with the other Steve Rogers. You know, they've been slowly getting taller over the years, and this one just really jumped the fence when it came to getting as tall as it did. Is it a great looking figure? Absolutely. Uh, but he's he's pushing the seven inch mark when it comes to, you know, his, his height next to Thor and Iron Man, uh, and heck, even the Hulk at this point. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it you push him to the back of the shelf, you know, you keep him and Peggy, back there, you know, where people can't get as, as good a read on, on their heights. So that's my Captain America figure collection. Uh, it's been fun to collect these. I really, really love this character as depicted in the films, and the part swapping has made it even more interesting, though it does require a little extra investment. But I'm really happy with the figures they've put out so far, for the most part, barring a few height issues and, uh, you know, some accessory problems, as I said, with the first Avenger figure. But I'm hoping that maybe we will see a redone First Avenger Captain America in the full Captain America uniform. Hopefully not as tall as the rescue uniform Captain America, but I have no idea what's going on at Hasbro right now and, and, and why they would make those decisions. So we'll see what, what happens or doesn't happen. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this video as far as seeing these figures. It, it is something that I do collect as modern, and I know a lot of people think I hate modern stuff. I don't. I don't hate modern things. I hate bad things, uh, whether they're modern or vintage. So uh, I do really like these characters. Obviously, I've collected a lot of them, and maybe one day I'll do a full video about my entire Marvel Legends collection, which is all MCU-based uh, for the most part, with a few exceptions. Uh, so thanks for watching this, guys, and I will see you on the next video.